Welcome. Today we're going to discuss the drug lovastatin and specifically how it and other drugs like it act on cholesterol biosynthesis. To start, we will look at what exactly cholesterol is and its role in the human body. So what is cholesterol? Cholesterol is a sterile molecule that was first isolated from gallstones in 1784 and is most commonly associated with heart disease and heart attacks. It is a common misconception that cholesterol is a bad molecule that should be avoided at all costs. This isn't the case at all. Cholesterol serves many other functions in the body. For example, cholesterol plays an important role in eukaryotic cells by maintaining cell membrane fluidity. Cholesterol is also an important precursor to steroid molecules such as estrogen, testosterone, and cortisol. Some other important biochemical information about cholesterol is that it is a 27 carbon molecule as you can see in the picture provided at the left here and it is primarily synthesized in the liver but a significant amount is also synthesized in the small intestine. Um, it is also important to note um, about cholesterol synthesis that it is very sensitive to cellular cholesterol levels. This will become more important over the next few slides as we take a look at cholesterol synthesis. So how is cholesterol synthesized? As we mentioned in the previous slide, um, this is a primarily occurring in the cells of the liver. There are several steps in this process that we will go over in detail in the next few slides. Um, step one is the synthesis of isopentyl pyrophosphate. Um, this step is taking place in the cytoplasm of the cell. Isopentyl pyrophosphate is an isoprene unit that is a key building block of cholesterol, and it is formed from acetyl-CoA. Um, 3 hydroxy 3 methyl glutaryl CoA or 3 MHG CoA is formed from acetyl CoA and acetoacetyl CoA. HMG CoA is reduced to form mevalinate, which is catalyzed by HMG CoA reductase. As you can see here in the diagram provided, um, we're seeing that 3 HMG CoA is being turned into mevalinate. And this is an important step here where MHG-CoA reductase is forming that. Um, this is the committed step in cholesterol formation and it, is a cru and it is crucial to cholesterol synthesis. From there, the mevalinate is converted into 3-isopentyl pyrophosphate. This is done in three reactions, all of which require ATP, as you can see over here in this diagram. Um, the products or the product of this reaction is isopentyl pyrophosphate, which is a 5-carbon isoprene unit. Um, the next step in cholesterol biosynthesis is the formation of squalene. Um, and this is being formed from the isopentyl pyrophosphate. This is done in a stepwise fashion, where 5-carbon structures are transformed into 10-carbon structures, which are then transformed into 15-carbon structures to finally create squalene, which is a 30-carbon structure. Um, to begin, as you can see up here, um, isopentyl pyrophosphate is isomerized into dimethyl pyrophosphate. Both of these structures are five carbons in length, as you can see here. Um, from there, another isopentyl pyrophosphate is added to um, general pyrophosphate to form, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped a step. Um, one dimethyl pyrophosphate and one isopentyl pyrophosphate yield geranyl pyrophosphate, which is a 10 carbon molecule, which is right here. And then from there, another isopentyl pyrophosphate is added to form a uh, farnesyl pyrophosphate, which is a 15 carbon molecule. Two of these farnesyl pyrophosphates come together tail to tail to form squalene, which is a 30 carbon isoprenoid. which leads us to step three, which um, is where squalene is cyclized and its tetracyclic product is then turned into cholesterol. Um, this step also has a myriad of similar of smaller steps. Um, first, squalene is cyclized to form a ring, as you can see here. And from there, squalene is transformed into squalene epoxide, which is done um, via oxygen and NADPH. Um, from there, squalene epoxide is then transformed into lanosterol, which here is an intermediate step to form lanosterol, which is a 30-carbon molecule. 
and then there are 19 steps that are occurring here to remove three carbons to get our 27 carbon cholesterol. So those are all of the steps of cholesterol synthesis. So now we're going to take a look at high cholesterol and statins. Um, now that we understand the way cholesterol is formed under normal conditions in the body, we can examine the implications of, of when too much cholesterol is synthesized, and more specifically how drugs like lovastatin treat high cholesterol. So to put the function of lovastatin into context, we must first look at the clinical implications of high cholesterol. The, ma the major concern with chronically elevated cholesterol levels is atherosclerosis, which is a thickening of the endothelial lining of blood vessels, which you can see in the picture here, where we have this increased thickening of the vessel wall. This accumulation of plaque leads to stenosis or occlusion of the vessel, which can cause localized cell death, most evident in heart attacks and other cardiovascular events. Um, lipoproteins play a role in this accumulation. LDLs are specific lipoproteins that mediate the carrying of cholesterol to other tissues in the body and can contribute to the buildup of these plaques in inflammatory response. It is widely known that high cholesterol often comes from poor diet and lack of physical activity, which is true, but it is lesser known that cholesterol is also synthesized de novo. So we all have a base cholesterol formation occurring in the body without dietary input. People who have familial hypercholesterolemia have higher de novo cholesterol levels due to their genetics. So what is lovastatin? Um, now that we know the clinical significance of high cholesterol, we can begin to examine ways to treat it. Lovastatin, or Mevacor, as its brand name is called, um, is commonly used to treat hypercholesterolemia. Uh, as you can see from the picture provided, it has chemical properties similar to mevalonate, which will become more um, significant as we look at the next slides. So now that we will look at specific, we're going to look specifically at how lovastatin works to decrease cholesterol synthesis. Lovastatin is a member of the class of medications known as statin drugs, and statins work on a specific piece of the cholesterol synthesis path pathway. Um, you'll recall from earlier in the presentation that the limiting step of cholesterol synthesis um, is the formation of mevalonate, and that cholesterol synthesis is sensitive to cells, a cell's current cholesterol levels. Feedback regulation of cholesterol synthesis is mediated by HM, HMG reductase. Um, the enzyme that catalyzes the formation of mevalonate. Um, lovastatin works by acting as a, um, reverse, uh, a reversible competitive inhibitor binding to HMG-CoA reductase, preventing the synthesis of mevalonate, ultimately disrupting biosynthesis co cholesterol. It is important to note that lovastatin is a prodrug, or a reversible, a reversible derivative of a drug molecule that undergoes an enzymatic and or chemical transformation in vivo to release the, act, uh, the active parent drug, which can then exert desired pharmacological effects. Um, as you can see here, um, lovastatin enters the body in its inactive lactone form, as you can see here, and then is met, uh, metabolized by the body, and uh, its active form is activated to form the beta hydroxy acid, which is going to be the inhibitor of that HMG CoA reductase. Um, ultimately, this is going to decrease um, plasma blood cholesterol. <coughs> Excuse me. And then lovastatin and other drugs in this class are most effective way to decrease this plasma cholesterol level. This concludes my presentation. Here's a list of references and photo credits for those who are interested, and thank you for your time.